Oh, Shinichi, it's so peaceful and air is clean and fresh. Oh, yeah, I'm so happy we made the decision mm -hmm. to leave Tokyo for a few days. We're here in northern Akita. So this area is located 660 kilometers north of Tokyo and can be accessed by airplane or Shinkansen bread train. Obviously, I'm here for the food. Yes, Akita is famous for many local cuisine that I've never tried before, so I'm super excited. But by the end of this video, hopefully you and I will agree that Akita is a good place to visit. Are you ready? Let's go! Colin? Yeah, come on. This is Colin, our guide today. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. First stop is Okawa Kobea. We will learn how to make butter mochi. Oh, that sounds wonderful. So what is butter mochi? Butter mochi is a portable food made with mochi, butter, and egg. Cannot wait to see how it's made. And I cannot wait to try it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So to make butter mochi, it all starts with mochi rice. It gets steamed in these wooden steamers. Look how beautiful that is. Then it gets thrown into the mochi pounder. This is the next step here. Um, so the mochi was uh, pounded with the butter and all the other ingredients inside this um, uh, mochi zuki, this mochi pounder. And right now, uh, he transferred it to this uh, square container and he is uh, spreading it. That's so interesting. It's almost like um, it kind of reminds me of baking, although no baking is required. So this shop is actually famous for making onigiri. This is what they started out with and they also make butter mochi but you can get these onigiri at the supermarkets around town. So I'm gonna try out their onigiri. Thank you. Mmm, that's, that's amazing. I'm really hungry right now, so it just tastes a lot better. But Japanese rice is always good, but I hear that Akita is really famous for rice. So it's really good. Mmm, that's salmon inside. Mm. Lady gave us a tray of uh, butter mochi to take back home. I'm gonna try one of it right now. Look at that, it's so soft and squishy. Just freshly made. Oh my god, mm. it's so good, it's soft, it's buttery. It kind of tastes like the butter mochi that we have in Hawaii, but the texture is completely different. This one is just smooth and soft like a mochi should be. So after a 30 minute drive, we arrive at the Aniai Station, Shiaosu Eki, which means the happiness station. Yes, trains do come and go here. Um, but this is our destination for lunch. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you, why are you creating a racket? <laughs> All right guys, so it's lunch time. We're at this place called Kogumate. It's located inside the train station and we've ordered a couple of dishes and really looking forward to it. Wow. Guess what we're having for lunch? We are having a horse meat stew. Yeah, that's right. You heard me right. Horse meat. And horse meat is kind of like a specialty. Uh, around these parts. It's kind of a traditional uh, dish that they have and it's kind of uh, like a less fatty beef and tastes a little bit like venison. I've actually had horse meat before twice in my life. I had it raw. Um, I don't love it. It's a little bit challenging for me but this one I'm willing to try because like Colin said horse meat is eaten here in this region and this one is cooked like a stew. 
and this comes with this golden rice and it smells amazing so let's give this a try and I just cut my meat my piece of meat with my spoon it's pretty tender I don't need a knife Mmm. Oh, actually that's really good. I was expecting it to taste like beef. It's a little bit different from beef. I feel like it's a lot tender than beef. Not as fatty and it has a really nice flavor. It's not gamey at all whatsoever. Mmm, look at that. Mmm, mmm. Very tender and less fatty. The meat fiber automatically separated in my mouth. It's disappeared, melted in my mouth. So we just finished lunch and that was delicious. And you know, right outside the restaurant, there's this uh, kiosk selling stuff. Of course, gotta check it out. Oh, it's banana board. Yeah. Oh, banana board. Can we get a banana board? Yes. Chocolate cream banana boat. Mmm, mmm, good. Can I have some? Nope. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. Wow. Apparently, this mm. is something that's of a specialty around this area as well. Mmm. So this is um, one of the active dogs that we have here in Odate City who kind of acts as an ambassador to visitors oh. of the city. Oh. Yeah, so when you come off the train, you can come here and actually get a meet and uh, kind of see where you like the dog. You know, it's very rare that we uh, enter shops and show you guys uh, things, you know, that are beautiful. And there are a lot of beautiful things that are handmade here in Japan, and this is one of them. So it's such a treat to be able to show you guys uh, some of the things that are handmade here in this area. So Magewapa was originally a craft for samurai to do in their free time when they weren't training for battle. And it uses all-natural Akita cedar grown here in the prefecture and it gives off a really nice aroma to whatever you have inside, be it rice for your bento or tea, and it's a really luxury item that they sell. It's a rice bowl. <laughs> this shop is called Shibata Shoten, and not only do they have um, things that you can purchase over there, but you can also learn how to make one by yourself. They have classes here every day, and um, yeah, one day I would love to do that. And right next door, they have a cafe. Right there. Yeah. But this is a really nice shop and I am so tempted to buy myself a mug. Starting is always beer. Come by. That's good. Ah, my book. Some of our yakitori has arrived. This restaurant specializes in a local chicken called Hinai Jidori, and there are three famous chickens in Japan, and this is one of them. So this is the negima, which is chicken thighs with negi. It's a little bit firmer. It has like a chew to it. Itadakimasu! The more you chew, the more flavor comes out of the chicken. I'm very really looking forward to eat this. The outside is skin, and inside it's breast. Mmm! 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 Very nice chicken flavor! 
It's so concentrated and the texture better than I imagined. これ全部大立ての北志家さんのお酒です。で、これが秋田小町。秋田小町。牛は秋田小町です。うん。Here is this is drier than the first one, and it has rich aroma. This is the Oyako Donburi using the Jidori, the local chicken. Check it out, guys. This is what it looks like. Look at that. The egg is not fully cooked, which is the way the Japanese people like it. Ah, oh, look at that. Mmm, mmm. The egg is so fluffy. It's like eating a cloud. And so much flavor in the chicken, I gotta say. And even the egg they use tastes different. And it's because they're using the special egg from the special chicken. From this special place. I'm so full! Oh. This is a very old wooden build theater called Korakukam. Uh, now this area has all these old structures like theaters and stuff because uh, this used to be a mining town and so this was a town for the miners where they could come and get some entertainment. So we're at the Korakukam Theater in Kosaka town in Akita and this is the second oldest wooden kabuki theater in all of Japan and it's built in the traditional style of kabuki theaters. So all the seats are these kind of tatami seats that you see down here. And one of the really unique features of this place, which you can just make out, is it has a rotating stage. Uh, so there's a special equipment underneath that people pull and it actually rotates the entire stage. Constructed in 1910 for the enjoyment of local miners, the theater has a western facade with a traditional Japanese interior. Shows are still held all year long and has been operating over a century since the very first show. You can even take a guided tour before and after performances and see what happens backstage. You'll also be able to check out the dressing rooms to see famous kabuki actor autographs and even go under the stage to view the rotating stage mechanism. And during the winter months, you can even dress up in typical kabuki outfits. The next is Kosaka Mine Office. Yeah, it's amazing. amazing. This is the original building. It looks like Buckingham Palace. Well, maybe not the Buckingham Palace, but it looks like a palace. Katsu kare ramen. I'm used to eating katsu kare raisu, but never on ramen. And this is a ramen with a whole tonkatsu on top. Now apparently, this area is famous for their katsu ramen. They have a whole bunch of restaurants that serve this particular dish. And the curry taste is spot on and the noodles are delicious. This looks like the ramen soup with curry poured on the top. That's really nice. Mm. Super, super flavorful. If you like Japanese curry, you'll definitely like this. So katsu ramen is a soul food of this area. I haven't eaten this the tonkatsu on ramen. And this is not curry, it's a regular ramen soup. First, I want to sip this soup. Mm, mm, mm. It's really good. Authentic Japanese soy sauce flavor ramen. Very good. I will bite this katsu piece. Itadakimasu. Mm. I think they are using a fine crumbled panko bread crumbles outside. So I worried about the outside become very soggy, but this is not. It's, of course, it's soaked in the soup, but it's not soggy. <clears throat> I'm eating a katsu kare ramen. I'm very curious this flavor. 
what's different? Maybe the curry flavor and the soup flavor is very gentle and very a little bit nostalgic flavor. Oh, another new discovery. Now we're off to stay overnight at a Japanese farmhouse to learn how to make Akita's most iconic dish, the Kiritampo. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys real soon. Bye bye!